with it as we grow and expand. And um, so much is happening at China Institute. And tonight I'm delighted to introduce with another exciting program. You know, we've done education, we've done business programs, arts and culture programs, language training. We just had an amazing food and ideas festival on the weekend where it brought people thinking everything from agricultural activists to getting a taste of what's happening in China literally and in, um, intellectually as well. Um, I'm just thinking, I saw Ingrid somewhere. Oh, our <laughs> Secretary of Board Ingrid Amber is here today, welcome. And um, today is actually going to be really interesting. Um, we've recently inked an agreement with the Central Conservatory of Music in Beijing and the Bard School Conservatory to bring music to China Institute. And I'm always surprised. I never know what's going to catch on, what's going to be popular, and what is language. Um, so one of the things that surprised me is our Kuching class, right? Oversold, oversubscribed waiting list for people trying to study the Kuching. But today, we have a really something that's near and dear to my heart. I was telling members of the band, first time I went to Inner Mongolia was 1981 when I was studying in college in Beijing. I first got to hear a little bit about this throat singing. What is throat singing? What does it mean? Um, and then I learned that the group that we're going to have today um, combines the traditional elements of root singing with heavy metal elements. And they've got a band in Beijing combined with the spirit that comes from the grass. Um, you didn't stand up to hear me talk about it. I just wanted to introduce our director of education, Liao Shen Zhan, who, in addition to running music at CI, runs everything from our pre imminent up and coming immersion program for preschoolers to adult and ongoing professional development for teachers. So let me hand it over to Shen Zhan to tell you a little bit more about tonight's program.
Technology takes a little bit of time. Oh, thank you so much for the amazing performance. Well, precisely for this program, well, we invite musicians into a dialogue about the music, the instrument, and also, of course, the musician, the, the people who are bringing the music to life. So before we go to the instrument and the music itself, I do want to have a brief chat uh, with both of you to get a little bit better understanding of you. So please, well, tell us what brought you to New York. Uh, so in this January this year, we received an um, invitation from a non-profit charity called Extreme Tour to be here in the USA and to perform on the stage. So before New York, where did you um, perform? In the United States? Uh, 
not sure. So it's Idaho, Utah, Los Angeles, and Nashville. So you've been really seeing a lot about the American audience. But first time to New York, to the New York audience. Is this the, actually the first time? Yes. Oh, so we are in New York. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now get to the song you just performed. What's the title of the song and what is the song about? So, what is the song about? So, this song is from my teacher. Um, my teacher composed this song. Name is Igor Solo. And it's about when he drove all the way from Russia to Tuva Republic and across the forest and the feeling that he received. What does Igor mean? Igor is what is Igor is the name. Whose name? His teacher's name. So Igor is the name of the teacher who yeah. drove across <coughs> Russia and well, created this beautiful solo. So now we, oh, by the way, I'm not going to talk through the entire time. They have an amazing uh, presentation to do later, so uh, I'm just warming up. But I do want to get into the technical part a little bit. I know. <laughs> So, um, we know that the, the topics um, of tonight is the particular unique um, singing technique you just performed. Um, so, for busy New Yorkers, do you have like one or two sentences to just tell us what it is? <laughs> So it's an overtone singing. It's a very um, old form of um, singing way, singing way. Um, usually people just produce one note at a time, but for a throat singer, they can produce two or more sound simultaneously at one time using the tone, uh, your jaw, your jawline, your chain, yes, the manipulation. Well, that's amazing, um, because I can barely speak two languages and definitely not at the same time. <laughs> uh, so now I want to turn to Urban Bleak. Uh, you played the beautiful instrument. Could you tell the audience what's the name of this instrument? It's called a horse head fiddle. You can see from the top of the instrument is a horse head. So is horse-headed fiddle a sort of like cousin of Erhu, the two-string fiddle? Thank you. 
later. Uh, I, I said, well, New Yorkers are busy, but we are here tonight. And we are here all for your music and the instrument and the beautiful presentations you will uh, present. Um, I do have two more questions. One is, um, so Urban Bleak, I know you are teaching Ma Tou Qin, um, the instrument at the, uh, the National, in the Inner Mongolia Academy of Arts. Who are the students today in China studying this instrument? 他知道你是内蒙大学的马头琴老师，他想知道现在在学习马头琴的都是有哪些人群。嗯，在这个马头琴的这个发展，其实年龄其实他就是改革成这样专业的马头琴，呃，才有四十多年。啊，现在。In the long history of the horse head fell, the most popular time for the horse fell is only the Latest的一个。对，但是它之前呢，已经是有两千年，甚至是会更久远的历史。因为它是胡琴嘛，就是北方游牧民族的，呃，所有的那个我们东部，就是说我们世界东部地区的这个弓弦乐的这个，也算是
the, inno the innovation from the um, traditional to the formal. Mm -hmm. So when you started uh, the music journey, um, how old were you? Fifteen. Fifteen. Was this instrument covered by um, sheepskin or it was already the wooden box? You learned that it was sheepskin. Sheepskin. This is what we did. Oh, he made this. Mm -hmm. So while you are um, continuing the traditional music instrument and you are also doing experiment and to make it to be more connected to today's world, right? In your learning process, you have some changes. When I first learned this instrument, I learned it in a traditional way. But when I grew up, I know there's more form of music in the world, like rock, metal, jazz, blues, and all others. And I was thinking, if this instrument can combine or can interpret it in its own way to play this form of those form of music, and I tried the innovation and I experienced a lot of struggles. But this instrument embraces all kinds of the music. Well, that's a great segue to perhaps you can talk a little bit about your band. This time, you can talk about your band. Our band is called Yuan Yuan. It was founded in the year 1914. Just like the young man said, our band is called Yuan Yuan. 我们把传统的乐器演变成跟现代的乐器结合的这样一个乐队。So、um, we are a folk metal band. The... <coughs> so besides the guitar, bass, drum, or the Western instrument, we combine the traditional instrument to our music. We combine. We face a lot of the struggles of how to enlarge the sound of the traditional instrument and how to combine both the instrument in one song, in one music. Um, 
这个过程中，我们遇到了很多问题，就是怎样曾经在蒙古包里面，嗯、呃，给五六个人听拉琴，演变成现在这样，就是、说给五六百人或者是五六万人的现场，我们怎样能把自己的声音放出去，把自己民族乐器的声音给。更远的人听到，所以说我们做了很多改良。这个琴以前根本就不是这样的，原始的琴不是这样的。The traditional one, they don't look like this. The traditional instrument, they don't look like this. Because the traditional instrument, the sound is only can、um, hear by five or six people or in a little small room, like the traditional Mongolian house. But we try to bring this to the world, to bring this to a bigger, larger stage. So we do a lot of innovation, as you can see. Yeah, the sound box is different. They add this on the instrument, so this can sound like an electric guitar or electric bass. So that's the piece. Yeah, that's the piece that enlarges sound. That's it. Is, yeah, that's a battery. If anyone here know about the phantom power. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah, amplifier. That's an amplifier. Yes. 就是说，我们的民族乐器没有像美国的乐器，比如说像吉他、贝斯这样进化的这么好。所以说，我们我们的民族乐器还在这个改良之中。通过现在的年轻人，相信不久的二三十年里面。会发展的会比较好一些。So, I'm actually gonna leave the stage for the real experts now.、Uh, you have your、um, presentation to share your knowledge and experience with the audience, and we will come back with questions from the audience and their performances. Thank you. Of, of Mongolia, 
our faith is the natural God, is the natural, is a mother grassland, is the sky. And if the human being can speak, if the animal can speak, definitely the nature can speak too. So we uh, imitate the sound of the animal like sheep and the sound when the wind blow into the mountain. Uh, Humai belongs to a Mongolian name called Chao'er. Yes, Chao'er. Chao'er is the most famous. Chao'er means the um, multiple sound, overtone. Humai is the most famous name in Mongolia. It's the most famous name in Mongolia. It's the most famous name in Mongolia. It's the most famous name in Mongolia. Humai means a way Humai um, is the way that human being, what human being perform in char. Yes. Uh, for example, <laughs> more a hey, he. This one. is the one tone. He yes. Two more. He.
So next is the um, horse head fiddle.
之后呢，他第三个阶段就是成为了这个马步琴，他站起来了，是吧？站起来就是他的一个独立的一种演奏形式，就是结合了很多种，就是结合了前一和前二的这样的一个演奏状态。完了之后，第三阶段就成为了马步琴自己独立的一种演奏模式，就是独奏。独奏的话就是怎么说呢 ？solo。梅洛霍夫的缩奏是这样的状态，呃，他借鉴了很多小提琴、小提琴和大提琴的一些演奏方式，你们听一下就知道了。
if I have more time, I will definitely want to play more songs and introduce more about the horse and fiddle culture to you guys. And I am honored to be here. And thanks to everyone for like our Mongolian stuff music and like Mongolian instrument. And uh, this instrument can be used playing with the Western style of music or Mongolian style pieces. And the primary education is learn to scale to train the ear for achieving the uh, muscle memory. So now I will play horse and fiddle with the Western instrument guitar. Thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you.
before we close the program, are there any questions from the audience? Yes, there's one there. Can I ask two, <coughs> yes. Can I ask two questions? Yes, please. <laughs> Do you all plays, uh, play modern pieces? Do, do you have any traditional pieces? And if there are, how old? I mean, like 200 years, 300 years? 就是你们是不是全都是弹新创作的曲，还是你们有非常古老的传统的乐谱传传下来？第一个问题。呃，它有两种，第一种就是我们传下来，但是没有谱子，就是口传心授这样的，我们都是这样，口传心授的这样的教育模式。以前，呃，在这四十年以前，我的这个乐器啊，在四十年以前都是口传心授，没有谱子，手把手教。I will quickly translate that. So there are two ways of doing it. One is uh, actually 40 years ago, while there's no score or no script. So basically it's from, uh, it's the oral tradition. And uh, that's coming, um, that's inherent, that's continued, the music tradition. 40 years ago, there's nothing. They basically, based on memories. So when uh, Baisilo first started, well, there, are, there were not many teachers around. So he and his friends actually drove, uh, flew to Russia and then drove 14 hours into the forest to find the teacher in the Tuva Republic. That's Tuva. Tuva, Tuva. Uh, it's part of, uh, I, checked, I, I looked it up and it's like at the border of Mongolia and Russia. Um, so uh, to study Humai. Um, 
没有口气，到现在都没有。他因为声部声声部。对，无法记谱。因为是多声部的，对，所以无法记谱。对，记谱不了。So there's still until today there are still no ways to uh to keep a record to to actually transcribe who my because of the complexity. So that's something for them to invent. You got some ideas. 就是从我们这，我们的。我跟您说一个故事，就是我们现在的这个现在的 MIDI 制作，就是电脑录音，就我们唱的这个呼麦无法去修，您唱到什么样就什么样，修不了音。我一个呃，修不了。你要唱不好，那就是这样。所以我们没有假唱啊。<笑> So even through the computer system, the digital, uh, to, in that process, there is no way to make adjustments uh, or to, to, to change any parts of their uh, recording. So there is no fixed singing for Wu Mai. The way that while well, coming out from his throat and mouth, that's the music. That's the original one. First, I would like to ask Taiba uh, in Mongolian English because I'm Mongolian, mm -hmm. and second, of course, in English. Talking by Ta 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 that's my question. Thank you. I don't need to translate it because he speaks English. He speaks English. I don't need to translate it. You can answer it, okay? I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. Хуэмэн айн шоуэл байгасын, ангийн байгасын, жохан байгасын. Үр монголын бүхэлдоу нь хуэмэн, хуэмэн айн сурчид маршгий гавиадтай. Маршг гавиадтай. There's a Mongolian teacher called Otsun, who is actually the provide the хуэмэ, the class in Indian Mongolia. That's how I heard from him. Thank you. I don't need the microphone. Uh, <laughs> so there will be some groups that will specialize in the throat singing. There will be other groups that will specialize, or there will be a musician that specializes in uh, the long horse fiddle. That they'll actually, he is, becomes the focal point of the group. And there will be other bands where the play of that instrument will be the, the, the star. So it, so it shifts from uh, what your specialty is, right? So your some question is, uh, are there different focal sort of like focus of the band, focus yeah, on a different focus. instruments? Yeah, because there will be people that don't throat, there will be Mongolians that don't throat sing, but there will be a master on that long horse fiddle, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll be the star. <coughs> so his question is, is the sound of 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 the 比如说是呼麦的专家，是马头琴的专家，是这个这个乐器的专家。那么在一个乐队里面，那么都有他不同的这个，就是这个专注在这一种乐器，或者说专注在这个呼麦上面。Yes， 呃、uh, <笑>，我们也会很多乐器，但是一个人的能力有限，他肯定会专注一一件乐器，对。单说有专家就不敢当了，有<笑>我们都是从民间出来的。<笑> so, um, okay, I will just speak loudly. It's okay. <laughs> it will work. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, so for the band members, well, they actually are. Um, uh, they
they can play many different instruments, and well, because um, and they would have one focus over another uh, to develop that particular expertise. Okay. Um, and also, well, they are not sort of like trained from this academic, systematic way of being this um, musician. So you're really coming from the folk tradition that they learn from the older generation or the oral uh, kind of tradition and then practice and become um, the musician as they are today. I'm just going to see one more question. There's no way that you can sing and play an instrument at the same time, right? Excellent question. Uh, this is what's happening in the recent six to seven years, and this is precisely what their band is looking into. 它的这个声音就是本身自带失音的失真这个跟我们现在做的这种麦头这个风格特别音的频段特别融合包括我们的呼麦也是一样失真是什么意思它原来的这个乐器就是失真吗就是过载了嗯 <音>就是不能够弹奏出他最真实的声音吗就这意思是量过大了过载了就这意思对他比较有力量 so, um, so this is one of the experiments well, that, that they are looking into. For, for example, that um, the horse-headed um, fiddle. Well, the sound coming from the instrument actually is too powerful. So they have to make some changes so that well, uh, to, to fit into the, uh, the what's required or man, um, mandated by the new music form. 还有就是更重要的一点就是从古代的蒙古人到现在的蒙古人那种精神蒙古人身体身体里面有他的血液精神和这种个性马头琴跟金属乐是完全能更加完美的能体现出来嗯这种力量感 so, Another um, important point is also the connection between the uh, Mongolian instrument, for example, this one, and the heavy metal um, music form is the spirit of Mongolian culture. From the ancient time until today, well, it, it can actually transcend the, both um, the, the, the deep sound of the soul of the Mongolian culture. So there is actually a, a nice fit uh, for the Mongolian instrument to play the rock band music. <笑>我打个广告，我们的那个专辑在那边，在在有卖有预售。那个如果想听那种民族音乐跟这个现代摇滚乐、金属乐结合的，可以去那边买。So this is the perfect time for advertisement. Well, there there are uh, their album out there. Uh, so if you are really curious about how the traditional music is reinterpreted and reinvented for the modern day rock music, well, the sound is over there and you can purchase <laughs> tonight. Dinda? So, I'll just speak loud. Um, I'm really curious as to what...
what happened to Mongolia traditions uh, over the last 40 years. I mean, did, did the traditions kind of die out and get squashed during the Cultural Revolution, and then have they been revived, revived in the last you know, 10 or 20 years? And what is it like to be a Mongolian person in, in China? In or Mongolia? <laughs> 这个问题是关于在过去四十年中这个蒙古的文化它的变化比方说不管是在文化大革命还是现代的一些影响那么作为一个蒙古人那么心里面的这种你们的经历和感受是怎么样的 这个问题我也很想回答，但我怕回答完了我回不去了。是一段时间有下滑的时间，我觉得所有民族的音乐都有。当近几十年，呃，蒙古的这个民谣在不断的上升，不断的扩展，对，有更多的人来。<laughs> so, well, first of all, he wants to answer this question, and he did, but the first thing he's like, uh, yeah, I want to answer the question, but I also want to go back to China <laughs> after answering the question. <laughs> so, um, so the, um, the, 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 the real answer is, well, there are ups and downs. Well, there has been going down for a while, and then in recent years, there has been a um, revival of the Mongolian culture. Okay. I'm looking at time just because, well, we have, I have to control the time. Don't hate me. So two more questions. I'm looking at... Yeah. Thank you. So I have a question. I'm not sure if I'm right or wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me. So uh, all the whom I have been hearing are all from male singers. So uh, and also they sound very deep, thick, and uh, masculine. So I wonder if girls can do the same thing, especially for those who have high pitch and soft voices like me. So I'm very curious if girls can also do the same performance. So you got that one to show. Um. Um. 我听到所有的呼麦的表演都是男歌手在演唱包括很著名的那个摇滚女歌手蒙古的辛格格日乐她从来没有唱过呼麦所以我印象当中呼麦就是非常的男性化非常的有力量感然后我想问女生是不是也
for men and women both can find their pitch um, to uh, sing who am I according to the kind of who am I that will match matches your pitches. So for example, they demonstrated on the stage a variety of different ways. I, uh, well, I, I, I think, well, you demonstrated at least three or four. You mean just that, 刚才演示了差不多三种或者四种，五种，五种，四五种，四五种， yeah. Uh, so four or five different who am I, and then they um, actually well speaks to different pitches of the of the throat. So for women, for example, well depending on the pitch, usually it's higher or the middle pitch, and then you can choose the high pitch or middle pitch who am I to learn. While the low pitch who am I perhaps uh, is better uh, better fit for a male voice. 因个人的嗓音条件不一样，有些女孩唱的也特别低。嗯。And and there are examples that for girls, it could be like really low pitch, and you can still do in line. One last question. Yes. Yes. In the back. Oh, thank you. Uh, the clothing that you're wearing, especially the metal decoration, is it all decorative, or does it, it suggest some kind of functional use? 就是你们戴的这个首饰，啊。这个是装饰吗？还是说有它的一些什么用处？是衣服上的这些铁的东西，不是啊、哦？你这当个模特。<笑>这边有我们很多呃，我们民族的图腾啊、呃，信仰喜欢的图腾，我们会吊系在骨头上，或者是在银饰上面。嗯，这个是银做的吗？这个这个不是，我们做的，金属的，呃，银银子做的，是银做的，啊，对，银匠做的。啊、uh -huh. ，Yeah， so it's made of silver and it's actually carved um with the the、uh, the totem that believe in Mongolian belief, um so that becomes some decorative but also carrying on the tradition of belief and the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can really see the powerful music coming from. Check out the website. We've got、um, our film society, Modern Love in China, a family friend, a friend of China Institute, who won、um, the first place in South by Southwest Film Festival. He's coming to do a live discussion with us, and we're having another program on what makes China laugh.、Um, after we have what makes China tick, it's about humor in China. So one more time, a big thank you to all of our friends.